Right then, finally onto some more A6 stuff. We needed to hurry up with this really because um, we've sold the brakes off this to another customer. The standard brakes on this are 350 mil two pots. So getting rid of them and we're gonna put these on. So these are actually Audi SQ7 six pistons, which we're gonna clean these up a bit before they go in. And they run on a 400 mil disc. Now we're hoping these are gonna be a straightforward swap and we'd have done them at the same time as lowering it, which thinking about lowering it, we're gonna try and get it a little bit lower on back. There's some little uh, sleeves that you can take out, some like little spaces. So we'll try and take them out, just get back a little bit lower. But we're hoping that these would fit straight on 400 mil, six pots. It didn't work out like that. So when we eyeballed it up last time, we realized that we needed to shave a little bit of material off back of here, which I think we took about two or three mil off. And then we also had to make some little spaces that sort of go on there. So that's gonna go like so, well, which way, yeah, like that. So that's gonna, the hub's gonna bolt on there. Another thing that causes a bit of trouble, well, the actual socket that you use to take these apart, which that bolt looks a little bit rounder, but it's not really. It uses this silly QKX3, which I have no idea what that means, but it's specific to Audi brakes. So anyway, sorted that out. And behind the disc as well, I believe we're gonna have to put a little space. I think this one might be a little bit too thick, but we've got a slightly thinner one behind the wheel as well anyway. So we can put that behind the disc and just space things out. There's a little bit more clearance on these than the actual standard calipers because those wheels, the Bentley wheels, are designed for a bigger caliper anyway. So as you get close to the middle, you can sort of see it gets closer and closer. So that's where we're having the interference there. So obviously when you move the caliper out here, it should be fine. So pushing the disc out is not a big deal. So we just ordered some genuine pads as well. And this is designed to stop a two ton, probably two and a half ton, five, 600 horsepower if you tune them, tank. So it should have plenty of braking performance and it's definitely lacking at the minute. Now we've tuned it, it's definitely not fast enough. Still not quite got to where we want to get with the intercooler and everything. And once we've done that, then we're onto the turbo. So we'll leave having to do what he's doing after dinner. We'll see how it works. So, oh, we finally got brakes sorted. Took a little bit longer than I expected because we uh, took a box of bits out that were full last time we had a look and some little clips had gone missing that turned out to be uh, 120 quid's worth, which were very frustrated. But anyway, I think they look sweet under these wheels. The car definitely needs a wash now, but they've not really been used that much. Owen's been out and just tested them. So I need to go out, bed him in a little bit, and then uh, give him a decent bit of usage. So when we were talking last time, and somebody mentioned on one of the videos when we did lowering that the back looks a bit higher and there's some little space you can take out. We'd not really pay much attention to that until we got it on ramp this time. The little plastic spaces that the guy were talking about, they're not there. 
<clears throat> on this model at least anyway. It's just got a couple of pieces of rubber. And then it got these little air deflector things on the front of the spring, sort of like that, if I remember, from underneath. So we just thought, it's not really doing much. It's probably only two and a half, three mil, something like that. So we'll just take them out anyway, just to drop that back, just a tiny bit, which I think it has gone down a little bit. It's not the 10 mil that we're hoping for, but the spring's a little bit inboard, so it's gone a little bit more than two or three mil. So we'll get out, see what these brakes are like, and then we'll uh, roll on to the next video. So we're out in the A6 with the big brakes on. The true test of big brakes is not my road driving, Scots, so there might be a uh, caveat in this one once he's had a go at it because he does know how to uh, make the brakes behave or misbehave usually. So, in theory, the pedal on this should be a little bit longer because we've got more pistons, more surface area, and what have you, and we've not changed the master cylinder. It does feel a little bit spongier, but I'd have to be sure how much bleeding these have had done to be 100% sometimes, especially if the ABS has not been actuated, that you'd end up needing to bleed them a second time anyway just to get that little uh, residual, especially when they've got such big calipers like that, air traps in them all over the place and a little drive normally agitates it, but anyway, that's even using, we use a Volkswagen pressure bleeder or what the dealers use anyway. So bedding the brakes in, loads of people have their ways and means of doing them and obviously racing brakes you have to bed them in a certain specific way to guarantee your life and what have you but from my experience and I've never warped any discs or pads or damaged any pads on a road vehicle that the best thing to do is what I'm doing now and that's just going at the speed limit and just knock a little bit of speed off 20-30 mile an hour or something and then keep moving and the main thing not to do at least for the first few presses is to completely stop if you can keep some airflow going that seems to always work for me and our brakes always tend to last a decent amount of time on our cars so I'll stick with that but this bedding them in for hundreds of miles just never works. You've got to get them used. It's like I've not pressed them for a good few seconds. No one around me. Down to like 20 mile an hour. They've got some bite. And that's just touching them, I can uh, definitely tell. Before you just, they worked, but especially after a couple of roundabouts, they didn't seem to, uh, they didn't seem to want to grab. I think what we'll do now is no on roads. Get a good stab, and my hair's a bit long, so it might uh, flap about a bit. Oh dear. Yes. They're definitely working. Very, very keen. ABS is kicking in a little bit, which you'd expect. It's quite a dry day, so it shouldn't be kicking in straight away. There's definitely uh, more brakes than the tyres can take now. I'll give it one more. I think we'll call it done. Scott don't like these. <laughs> There's something definitely wrong. So yeah, they work very, very well. I'll let them have a little cool down. I'm gonna definitely put it in workshop. Just have them give it another little bleed. Sometimes I think them pressure bleeders, especially when stuff's brand new, can sort of force the fluid past the air bubbles. So. Give it a little tappity tap with hammer. Try and force it towards the bleed nipples. And then we'll uh, actuate the ABS with Vagcom. 
as well, which I'd assume it's been done, but never hurts to try it again. And that should push everything out there. Really happy with how this handles as well. It's uh, even though it's a big heavy car, still handles pretty nice. So anyway, we'll get back to the workshop. So thank you for watching. We might get some uh, when these are properly bedded in and Scott's properly used them and said he's happy. Might be able to get some 60 to zero braking times. And if we end up at the uh, airfield that we're planning on going to in a few weeks might get some more than 60 to 0 braking time so we'll see so thank you